Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. <clears throat> Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, David Hay is backing away from the sport. Understand the time when you're going to find out that you have an injury that reveals itself when you try to throw a 95 mile an hour fastball or haymaker is when you're in training and you're actually trying to throw a 95 mile an hour fastball or haymaker, right? Obviously, David Hay, while preparing for a huge fight against Tyson Fury, found out that his shoulder was not only not 100%, but that his shoulder would require surgery, which he quickly had thereafter. Now, let me just say, at David Hay's level of the game, where you've been <clears throat> a you know, heavyweight champion, and where you're now in your 30s, it doesn't make sense to have surgery, rehab the injury, and then make a comeback when you don't currently have the title, right? There's nothing for David Hay to defend here. They're young lions right now out there at the edge of the forest. There's no reason for David Hay to continue his career when he's already been to the top of the mountain, right? This isn't tennis or some other sport where guys can get knocked down, like let's say Roger Federer, and then lose a few matches while they work through injuries, then slowly build themselves back up you know, have tennis matches every month, be part of the tennis tour, right, in a sport where there are several majors. Boxing's very different, right? In boxing, many elite fighters only fight once a year. Take a look at Shane Mosley's record, for example, right? If you lose, it's perilous. These guys aren't in round-robin tournaments four times a year, if not more. There's no boxing tour where all of your colleagues are traveling around together. <clears throat> so David Hay has a reputation. It's well-earned, in my opinion, and we'll discuss it. He's clearly a boxing Hall of Famer, right? David Hay can't afford to come back in his 30s and jeopardize that reputation by trying to see if the shoulder's okay against guys who aren't trying to outpoint him in a tennis match, rather are trying to knock him unconscious in the brutal sport of boxing, right? So my advice to David Hay is to simply walk away from the sport. If a doctor has told you to retire, there's no reason risking your health in a sport where many all-time greats slur their speech, right? You want to walk away while you have all your faculties. The downside risk is too great. The risk to your reputation is too great. The young lions are out there aiming for you. That's the nature of the sport. If there was ever a time to walk away where the fans would understand, it's right now. Now let's talk about David Hayes' legacy. I think it's a pretty big legacy. Let me just say this. I understand he's a controversial figure here online. There are a host of you who feel that he simply didn't fight long enough to be considered a great fighter, right? I understand David Hay right now is in his early 30s, right? He's not yet 35 years old. Okay, fair enough. But just consider the following. The way David Hay got his first cruiserweight title was he went to Paris to fight Mormack. He fought Mormack in his backyard. Now understand, Mormack had beaten Virgil Hill twice. Understand, Mormack 
was an experienced champion. <clears throat> Mormack made several defenses of his first cruiserweight title. Mormack, in fact, had held the cruiserweight title more than once. Right? So you're talking about a guy who had been a cruiserweight champion prior to the Hay match for years. Right? Different belts, different times. But understand, Mormack was clearly a championship level cruiserweight. And interestingly enough, how did David Hay take the title? Not by controversial decision, but by knockout. So then he fights Enzo Maccarinelli. Understand, Maccarinelli had been the WBO champion for years, had made several title defenses, had not lost for several years, right? That fight was a huge fight at the time, right? People really didn't know who was going to win that fight. Understand, neither Mormack nor Macarinelli were cream puffs. How did David Hay win that fight? By knockout. Folks, look it up. David Hay not only was the unified cruiserweight champion, but understand David Hay unified that title by stoppages. Neither fight went the distance. Neither fight was close to going the distance. So two fights later, and I agree it all happened fast, but let's judge a guy by the quality of his wins. Two fights later, David Hay fights for the heavyweight championship. And of course, what does he do? He does what he always does. He travels to Germany. He travels to the backyard of the champion. Right? And of course, he beats Value F. I understand there are skeptics on that fight based on the CompuBox numbers. But what I want you to do is to listen to the crowd in the 12th round. Understand, this is Valuev's crowd, right? Listen to the crowd in the 12th round. Listen to the crowd as they announce the decision because the decision, I believe, was a majority decision, right? Just listen to the crowd. Understand the crowd at the event thought that David Hay won the fight. This would be like the two men fighting in the United Kingdom, and the crowd booing David Hay in the 12th round and believing David Hay had lost the event, right? Understand, the German crowd, where Value F fought, I understand Value F was initially from a different country, but Germany was his home base for boxing. Value F's people, Value F's fans, thought that Value F had lost the title. So let's talk about David Hayes' career then, after that, as a heavyweight. He fights a former heavyweight champion, a guy who had beaten Evander Holyfield, John Ruiz. He wins that fight by stoppage. He fought Audley Harrison. He wins that fight by stoppage. Would it surprise you to know that of all the heavyweight fights David Hay had, the only guys to go the distance with him were reigning heavyweight champions. Valuev and Vladimir Klitschko. Those are the only guys to go the distance with David Hay at heavyweight. For those of you who consider David Hay a cruiserweight, you know, visiting heavyweight, then ask yourself, why was David Hay able to knock down the guys he fought? Didn't we think <clears throat> that Derek Chisora, who went 12 rounds with yeah. Vitaly Klitschko, right? He went the distance with Vitaly Klitschko. He went the distance with Tyson Fury. Didn't all of us think before the David Hay fight that Derek Chisora had a great chin? There again. David Hay gets the stoppage. There again, that fight wasn't close to going the distance, right? 
So David Hay literally, <clears throat> pound for pound, is one of the hardest punchers in recent memory. Right? Don't, you know, all I'm saying is this. As we consider it, just understand that David Hay's knockout percentage wasn't just above 50%. It wasn't just above 70%. Understand David Hay closes his career with a knockout ratio of 85%. Ask yourself, if you're a Nikolai Valuev fan, has Valuev in his life, at least his boxing career, ever been hit harder than he was hit by David Hay in that fight, right? Also in terms of <clears throat> survival skills, while it's true that David Hay was a knockout puncher who had several short fights, I believe we all know that it takes a lot of effort, I mean a lot of effort, to go the distance with Vladimir Klitschko. Isn't that what David Hay did? Think about it. Right? He goes the distance with Vladimir Klitschko in a fight in which David Hay doesn't do a lot of holding. Right? Let me just say, too, if you look at that fight, and I know David Hay's power eclipses everything else, it's hard to analyze him without being blinded by the power. When you look at that Vladimir Klitschko fight, what I want you to do is to actually watch David Hayes' head movement, right? Klitschko's in there trying to take him out, right? Klitschko's not running in that fight. He's trying to take out David Hay. Now, all I can say is David Hay actually has a lot of head movement. David Hay's rolling with punches. He's actually hard to hit in the head. Very hard to hit in the head. He's elusive in the ring. Also, let me say this too. You know, we notice hand speed <clears throat> when a guy's throwing combinations, right? It's easy to spot Ali's hand speed, right? Because when he opens up the medicine cabinet on Sonny Liston, right? You're seeing Liston just kind of like getting hit with punches and there's very little Liston can do. Right? We notice that kind of hand speed. I'm just here to tell you, David Hay is one of the fastest fighters I've seen. His hand speed's a little bit different, though, because of the punching power. In other words, David Hay comes in, hits Macaronelli so hard and so fast that Macaronelli's semi-conscious on his feet. Right? David Hay is hitting guys with such hand speed. He's zero to 60 so fast that his opponents are completely unprepared for it, right? They're getting hit. This is a theme in David Hay fights. One minute the opponent's conscious. The next minute the opponent is dazed and confused. They don't even know what happened. The reason we don't really focus on David Hay's hand speed is because David Hay's hand speed is the kind of hand speed where he hits a guy... The guy's dazed and confused. He hits the guy again. The guy's down. We don't get the benefit of a combination because once a Derek Chisora has been touched, the fight's almost over. Take the Chisora fight. One minute, Chisora thinks he's going in for the kill. The next minute, Derek Chisora again is semi-conscious. Right? David Hay, really, for a heavyweight, in fact, for a cruiserweight, had hand speed at the upper end of the spectrum, right? Also, when we talk about Hay power, understand as good as David Hay's right hand was, David Hay had a left hand. You're talking about a guy with two-handed power. Also, think about it. You've seen David Hay fights where he's dropping bombs, where guys are hitting the canvas. Think about the John Ruiz fight, right? He's, he's dropping bombs, guys with chins. And let's remember, Ruiz, and I know Ruiz had a problem 
Yeah, I think he got knocked out by David Tua years ago. But we know that Ruiz had survival skills. We know that Ruiz hung in there with many fighters. Now my point to you is, as David Hay is dropping bombs, do you notice how David Hay never looked like he was just swinging wildly? In other words, this was a guy with accuracy. Right, David Hay combined punching power right with hand speed and accuracy right I believe David Hay had some championship level skills I think what throws a lot of people off is the fact that David Hay while he moved around the ring when he was ready to trade with you he was mostly flat-footed right David Hay is what I call an ambush fighter right he'd be outside then he'd jump inside with bombs. Look at the Macarinelli fight, right? He's outside, plans the attack, jumps inside, throws bombs. Then, if the guy is able to somehow survive the attack, survive the ambush, David Hay would go back out and retool, prepare himself for the next attack. I understand for traditionalists who prefer, let's say, a Larry Holmes or an Ali, a guy coming in behind a jab, he's playing chess with you, he's at the chessboard. The idea of a guy backing away from the chessboard and then coming in trying to checkmate you and then backing away from the chessboard might seem a bit outside the regular ambit of things. But just understand that David Hay in his entire career only lost to two men. One was the wake-up fight most, the vast majority of fighters have, right? There's always that one guy out there who the fighter comes in, thinks he's prepared, makes mistakes, and loses. That's the fight to Carl Thompson, right? Early in David Hayes' career, right? And understand, Carl Thompson had a distinguished career himself. The only other fight David Hay lost was to Vladimir Klitschko. That's the only other fight David Hay lost. And understand, for those of you who want to say, who did he fight? Well, he fought two reigning heavyweight champions. He fought another guy who used to have the belt. He fought two reigning cruiserweight champions, right? And of course, there's a travel component to his game where he goes to Paris and he goes to Germany, picks up the cruiserweight title, picks up the heavyweight title outside the country. For me, that's enough for a guy to be in the Hall of Fame. For me, it's also enough for the guy to be, quite frankly, one of the dominant punchers of his era, right? Who, of course, won big fights. Now, everyone here online knows I'm not a shrill for David Hay. I was picking Tyson Fury in his next fight. But let me just say, when David Hay becomes eligible for the Hall of Fame, I will certainly be supporting his candidacy here online. I think he's an obvious Hall of Famer, right? I hope David Hay walks away from the sport, understand as someone who's watched boxing a long time. I've seen some fighters, Wilfred Benitez, Ali, Guys who were great fighters back in the day who now seem to have stayed in the sport too long, right? I don't want David Hay to make that mistake. If you're still young with your life ahead of you, you have a family, you have money in the bank, you have your health, you're an icon of the sport. I think now's the time to walk away and to leave this jungle to the young lions. Let me hear from you. Is David Hay a Hall of Famer? What do you consider his legacy to be? Let me just say too, how did David Hay try to prove he was the best fighter in the United Kingdom? First, he takes on Enzo Macarinelli, the other reigning cruiserweight champion. Then he takes on Derek Chisora. Then he signs to take on Tyson Fury. Right? This is old school. This is how you do it. 
You take on the best guys in your country in your weight class. Right? I understand the Fury people are going to say, well, he didn't follow through and fight us. All I can say is, right, if you believe that David Hay underwent surgery for a blown out shoulder, I would argue that there's a reason why he didn't take on Tyson Fury, right? So, food for thought, I think he's a Hall of Famer. I think he met the challenge. I think he did so in dramatic fashion, unifying the cruiserweight division by knockout, right? Taking on Vladimir Klitschko, right? Someone who I believe most of the public believes is the best heavyweight on the planet. I would say it's Vitaly. Keep in mind, David Hay called out both of them, right? But let's say that David Hay was prepared to fight the very best heavyweights out there. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.